important. Mafundisho haya kwanza ni ya muhimu sana. Now all this teaching I hope you don't just see it as a sermon. Mafundisho haya yote usione tu ni kama maubiri. You see it as a training for our life and our ministry. Yaone kama mafundisho katika huduma zetu na maisha yetu pia. Did you remember it? Then you remember it. Uyakumbuke. Then you'll be able to teach it. Kwamba utaweza kuyafundisha pia. Then you'll be able to apply it to your life. Ili uweze pia kuweka kuweka katika maisha yako and help the people to apply to their life. Na uweze kusaidia pia watu wengine kuweza kuyaweka katika maisha yao. That because all these teachings are not just a sermon. But it's something that we can continue to apply in our life. And people, when people follow that, their life will be changed. I have reasons to say that. Because I have trained people to follow this teachings. And I notice how the life is changed. Now this morning I will talk about the love of God and also distinction of the grace of God and his uh leo nitazungumza kuhusu upendo wa Mungu na utofauti ulio kwa katikati ya neema na sheria. So, distinction of the grace and the law of God. Utofauti kati ya neema ya Mungu na sheria ya Mungu. It's a very important teaching. Nifundisho la muhimu sana. It's something God has taught me. Ni kitu ambacho Mungu amenifundisha. Now, we all know that we live under the grace of God. Tunajua kwamba sisi sote tunaishi chini ya neema ya Mungu. We are saved by grace. Tumeokolewa kwa njia ya neema. We are strengthened by the grace of God. Tumetiwa nguvu na neema ya Mungu. And we are motivated and served by the grace of God. Tumechochewa kumtumikia Mungu kwa neema ya Mungu. But I have to tell you that most pastors or or Christians lakini nataka niwaambie kwamba wakristo wengi ama wachungaji wengi live under the law wanaishi chini ya sheria now you might be surprised waweza kushangazwa let me explain why wacha nieleze ni kwa nini now people may talk to people like that waweza kuwazungumzia watu sample you have to read the bible ni lazima usome biblia you cannot read the bible mbona hujasoma biblia and so you have no strength sasa hauna nguvu manake hujasoma biblia this like parents talking to children si hata unaona wazazi wakiongea na watoto you have to obey ni lazima watoto mtii if you don't obey kama hautatii au punish you I don't like you mimi sikupendi and no one loves you na unajua sikupendi now this is the way of many people talk hiyo ndio njia ambayo watu wengi wanazungumza also many christians talk to themselves like that na hata wakristo wanajiongelesha sample hiyo oh i have not prayed much ah mimi sijaomba zaidi i have not loved the lord much na mimi sijampenda mungu zaidi so The Lord doesn't like me. Sasa Mungu hanipendi mimi. And I cannot do much. Na siwezi nikafanya mengi. Because God doesn't give me much strength. Kwa sababu Mungu hajanipa nguvu nyingi. Now you probably have heard sayings like that from the people around you. Je, ushawaisikia watu wakizungumza mambo kama hayo? They say, "Oh, the level of God is too high." Anasema, "Ah, hatua ya Bwana iko juu zaidi." I cannot reach it. Siwezi nikaifikia. I cannot do it. Siwezi nikafanya. It's too difficult. Ni vigumu mno. And so God doesn't like me. Na sasa Mungu hanipendi. Now when people live like that, kwa hivyo watu wakiishi namna hiyo, they will say, "Wow, I you know, I'm no use." Wanasema, "Ah, mimi hata si mtu wa matumizi." And my life is not important. Na maisha yangu sio ya muhimu. Now actually all people grew up in the law, you know, in the society and Almost all families is growing up in the law. Kwa kweli watu wengi na familia nyingi zimeishi katika familia ukamtazama ukiona watu wameishi wakiwa chini ya sheria kabisa. People will say if you don't obey me you're not good. Ambapo watu wanasema kama hautanitii basi wewe hautakuwa mtu mwema. You know yous. Wewe hautakuwa wa maana. So I don't like you. Kwa hivyo mimi sikupendi. Now when people Hear about Jesus and believe in Jesus. Kwa hivyo watu wanaposikia kuhusu Yesu na kumwamini Yesu, they expect to change because we're now living under the grace of God. Wanatarajia kubadilika maana yake wanaishi chini ya neema ya Mungu. When people explain the gospel to them, watu wanapoelezewa injili kuhusu, you are saved by grace through faith. Umeokolewa kwa imani kwa Yesu Kristo. When you confess your sins and trust in Jesus. Unapokiri dhambi zako na kumwamini Yesu, then you are forgiven. Umesamehewa. Then you have eternal life. Uko na maisha ya milele. 
Now that's the beginning. Who are the ones or two? But after the person is saved, Baada huyo mtu kuokolewa, the people start to say, na watu wanaanza kusema, you did not love the Lord, hujampenda Bwana. You did not pray enough, hujamwo, hujaomba vya kutosha. And you 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 not you you cannot do much for the Lord, na hauwezi ukafanya mambo mengi kwa Mungu. And people start to say that to themselves. Na watu wanaanza kujizungumzia, I know use. Mimi si mtu wa maana, I cannot do much. Siwezi nikafanya zaidi. Now when Christians live like that, wa Kristo wanapoishi namna hiyo there is not much strength hakuna nguvu za kutosha they say oh, i have these faults and death faults wanasema kwamba hayo mimi ya mambo haya ni magumu siyawezi now even when preachers preach na hata wahubiri wanapohubiri very, very often they preach with a tone like this aha wahubiri wengi wasua asua sana wa afrika wanahubiri kwa sauti kama hii you're too lazy wewe ni mtu mzembe. No Wewe si mtu mzuri. God doesn't like you. Mungu hakupendi. What if Jesus comes back today? Yesu anaporejea saa hii, you have to show him. Wewe utamuonyesha nini? Have you heard people talk like that? Umeshawahi sikia watu wakihubiri namna hiyo? Now because people are under pressure. Ni kwa sababu watu wako chini ya mafinyiko. We have to do much. Ni lazima wafanye zaidi. And we're not good enough. Na sisi watu wema wa kutosha. Now we live like that. Kwa hiyo tunapoishi namna hiyo it's always a lot of pressure to be fuekewa nguvu zinathinywa zaidi. I have to do better. Ni lazima nifanye vyema. But it's hard to do better. Lakini vigumu kufanya vyema. It is why actually it's hard to be free and joyful. Kwa njia hii basi ni vigumu mtu kuwa kuishi kuwa na uhuru na kuishi akiwa na furaha. It's hard to enjoy God. Ni vigumu sana kugrudika Mungu. It's hard to have no burdens. Ni vizuri As Jesus said we should you know come to him and take that put down our burdens. Ni vigumu sana basi kumwambia Mungu kama uko na mizigo nje ukampelekea Kristo ukapumzishwe. Sema amen. 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 Because very often we carry the burdens of our ministry. Manake sisi kama viongozi basi tumebeba yule mzigo wa huduma wetu. We carry the burdens of changing people. Tumebeba ule mzigo wa kubadilisha nyoyo za watu. And we carry the burden I have to do better. Na sasa tunabeba mzigo wa kusema kwamba But I'm not good enough. Okay. Now I'm going to introduce some Bible verses to you. Sasa nataka nilete mistari ya Biblia and talk about how Jesus really want us to live with freedom and joy and peace. Na kusoma mistari na kuzungumzia jinsi vile Yesu anataka tuishi katika furaha na katika uhuru. The first Matthew 11:28 to 30 that you are familiar with this verse. Ya kwanza ni Mathayo mlango wa 11 mstari wa 28 hadi 30. Matthew 11:28 to 30. Mathayo 11 mstari wa 28 hadi 30. Come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Jooni kwangu wanaolemewa na mizigo mizito jooni kwangu mkapumzishwe na mkajifunge nira yangu manake ni jepesi mkajifundishe kutoka kwangu manake mimi ni mpole So Jesus said here if you are weary if you are tired and burdened come to me and you'll find rest Yesu anasema hapa kama umechoshwa na mizigo mizito basi njoo kwangu ukapumzishwe Find rest means you can relax Yaani kupata pumziko ina maana kwamba waweza kutulia you can enjoy waweza kusherehekea Now you know because Jesus is a source of freedom na sasa kwa maana yake Yesu ndio e, chanzo cha kila e, kitu when many people experience the holy spirit watu wengi wanapomhisi roho mtakatifu they say i feel free and burdenless wanasema ai sasa mimi mizigo imeondolewa niko huru i feel the burdens go away nasikia mizigo zimeondolewa very relaxed nasikia nimetulia kabisa now it's true that men, when many people believe in jesus they feel relaxed ni kweli kwamba watu wanapomwamini Kristo wanasikia wamefarijika. But in verse 29 Jesus said, lakini katika mstari wa 29 Yesu anasema, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, ukachukue nira yangu alafu ukajifundishe kutoka kwangu. When some people take the yoke of Jesus, that means they start to serve God with Jesus. Watu wanapochukua nira ya Yesu na maana kwamba wanapoanza kufanya huduma wa Kristo Yesu and try to live a life of Jesus when they learn from Jesus na waanze kujaribu kuisha maisha ya Kristo wanapojifundisha kutoka kwake they say ministry is not easy 
Wanasema kwamba huduma kweli sio kazi rahisi. It's hard to change people. Ni vigumu kuwabadilisha watu. And they say it's not light. Wanasema kwamba kwa kweli sio jepesi. But Jesus said this, I'm gentle and humble. Lakini Yesu anasema kwamba mimi ni mpole wa matendo. And you find rest for my for your souls. Na utapata pumziko la nafsi yako. And my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Na nira yangu ni jepesi na hata mzigo wangu pia ni mwepesi. Not we hear Jesus say I'm humble, I'm gentle and humble. Kwa hivyo Yesu anaposema kwamba mimi ni mpole na mimi sina maua. Many people go to heaven and saw Jesus. Watu wengi wameenda kule mbinguni wakamuona Kristo. When they saw Jesus the peace of God, the love of God flew to them. Walipo muona Yesu wakasikia amani na upendo wa Mungu kwa kubujikia. And there is one person called Ian who went to heaven when he was young. Called Ian. Ian. Kuna mtu ambaye anaitwa Ian aliyekwenda ali kule mbinguni. And when he was young he was a playboy. Na alipokuwa mchanga alikuwa kijana mkakamuvu. In the last moment before he died Jesus led him to repentance. Na sasa yeye wakati alipokuwa anakaribia kufa Yesu Kristo akamwachilia ili atubu. And he first went to hell when he died. Alipokufa alienda kuzimuni kwanza. And then he went to heaven and saw Jesus. Akaenda mbinguni akamuona Yesu. And then he was afraid Jesus might reject him. Na sasa akawa na uoga manake aligundua kwamba Yesu atam, Yesu atamkataa. Because he has lived a life of sin. Manake aliishi maisha ya dhambi. But then when Jesus, you know, when Jesus came to him, lakini Yesu alipokuja kwake, he saw a wave come up from Jesus. Aliona ni kama mawimbi inatoka kwa Kristo Yesu. And he thought Jesus is going to kick him back to hell. Akafikiria kwamba Yesu atamgonga teke amrudishe kule kuzimuni. But instead when a wave came to him, lakini wakati yale mawimbi yalipokuja kwake, he felt an overwhelming love. Akasikia ni upendo wa namna kuu sana. And when he talk about that, he said, na anapozungumzia hayo akasema, no one can be ready for Jesus. Hakuna yoyote ambaye ako tayari kwa Kristo Yesu. When we see Jesus one day, tunlap tutaka pomuona Yesu siku moja, we will say Jesus is so wonderful. Tutasema kwamba Yesu wewe ni wa ajabu. Your love is so great. Upendo wako ni mkuu mno. Now this man became a pastor after he came back. Huyu jamaa wakati alipofufuka akawa mchungaji mara tena. And when he mentioned this, na alipo ya, ya, ya tambua haya, he tears came to his eyes. Machozi yakamdondoka machoni because he said no one can be ready for Jesus. Manaka alisema hakuna yote ambaye ako tayari kwa Kristo Yesu. And then he remember when he experienced a love of God flowing to him. Na akakumbuka vile alivyohisi upendo wa Mungu kimbubujikia. And he said no one can be ready for Jesus. Akasema kwa kweli hakuna yote ambaye ako tayari kwa Kristo Yesu. He experiences this love of God. Yeye alihisi upendo wa Mungu. No one day when we go to heaven, unajua siku moja atakapoenda kule mbinguni and see Jesus and experience his love. Na tumuone Yesu na tuhisi upendo wake. You say, "Wow, God is in control of everything." Utasema, "Hai, kwa kweli Mungu ndiye anayeongoza kila kitu." He is full of love. Na yeye amejawa na upendo. But for my whole lifetime, lakini kipindi changu chote cha maisha, I've been carrying a heavy burden. Nimekuwa nimebeba mzigo mzito. How to help my people and my church to Jesus ya kusaidia watu wangu kanisani kukua is heavy burden ni mzigo mzito because we have not realized that Jesus is gentle and humble Maana sisi hatukugundua kwamba Yesu ni mpole na mwenye hana matata Bwana Yesu no. asifiwe Amen Now what does it mean there is gentle and humble Basi haya na maana gani unaposema kwamba Yesu ni mpole na hana matata He doesn't mind that we are weak Yeye Yesu hajali kwamba sisi tuwa dhaifu. He doesn't come to you in a rough way. Yeye hakujangi kwako kwa ile njia ya mshtuko. Now some people said Jesus did rebuild the Pharisees in a very heavy way. Watu wengine wanasema kwamba Yesu aliwakemea mafarisayo kwa njia ya kishindo. But you notice that 
Jesus only rebuked the Pharisees. Lakini unagundua kwamba Yesu aliwakemea tu mafarisayo peke yao. When he rebuked his disciples and said you have little faith. Na pia alipokuwa akiwakemea mitume wake akawaambia kwamba nyinyi mko na imani hapa. Jesus did not continue to say you have, you have no use you have no faith. Aha, aliwakemea wakati huo na hakuendelea kuwakemea kila siku jinsi vile wachungaji sisi tunasema kila siku kwamba hauna imani, haufanyi vizuri. But he said, lakini alisema, when you faith like a little mustard seed, ya kwamba imani yako hata kama ni ndogo kama vile embegu ya haradali, you can move the mountain. Unaweza uka ambia milima yenye hope. He always alikuwa anapea watu tumaini. It's only when people reject him that he will rebuild them. Ehe ni wakati tu ambapo watu watamkataa basi atawakemea. But even when Jerusalem and Israelites rejected him, lakini hata Waisraeli na Waerusalemu walipomkataa, Jesus cried to Jerusalem. Yesu alilia kwa ajili ya Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Yerusalem, Yerusalem. You have rejected the ones I sent to you and you have killed the prophets. Mmekataa yule aliye mtuma na pia mmeua manabii. But I want to gather you like a hen try to gather the chicks. Lakini nataka niwalete pamoja some jinsi vile kuku anavyoleta pamoja vifaranga zake. But you are not willing. Lakini nyinyi hamko tayari. Even when Jerusalem rejected Jesus, hata Yerusalemu walipomkataa Yesu, rejected God, walipomkataa Mungu. Jesus did not say you have no hope. Yesu hakuambia kwamba nyinyi hamna tumaini. He said I have wanted to gather you like a hen gather its chicks. Alakini aliwaambia kwamba ninataka niwalete pamoja jinsi vile kuko anapoleta vifaranga vyake pamoja. So you see here Jesus is always gentle. So unaona kwamba Yesu kila wakati ni mpole and he is humble to help every person. Na yeye ni mpole kusaidia kila mmoja. We are all weak. Sisi sote tu wa dhaifu. I am weak but he is strong. Have you heard this song? <laughs> it's okay. So it's I am weak but he is strong. Yani sisi tu wadhaifu lakini Kristo Yesu ni wa nguvu. Bwana asifiwe. Have you felt weakness? Have you felt weakness? Je, wewe umehisi kuwa mdhaifu? We try to change people. Tunajaribu kubadilisha watu. We try to change the church. Tunajaribu kubadilisha kanisa. But we don't have enough strength. Lakini hatuna nguvu za kutosha. We find it hard to change people. Tunapata ni ngumu basi kuwabadilisha watu. But Jesus is humble to come to us. Lakini Yesu ni mpole kuja kwetu sisi. And he says to us, na anatuambia, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mira yangu ni nyepesi na mzigo wangu pia ni mwepesi. He say relax. Anasema kama basi tulia. When you have me, kama uko nami, you have all the strength in the world. Uko na nguvu zote za dunia because I love you. Manake nakupenda. I want to bless you. Nataka nikubariki. I'll give you strength. Nitakupa nguvu. The more we try to use our own strength, kwa vyote vile tunavyojaribu kutumia nguvu zetu sisi wenyewe the less strength we'll have ndio hivyo sasa hatu nguvu ambazo tunazo kidogo zinadidimia kabisa but the more we enjoy jesus lakini ule wakati tunapoendelea kumuburu kusherekea yesu because he came to take away our burdens manake alikuja kutuondolea mizigo and he is gentle and humble yeye ni mpole na ni mtulivu and he will give us strength atatupa nguvu He's always with us. Ye akona sisi kila wakati. And we'll find his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Na tutapata kwamba mzigo wake na nira zake ni vyepesi sana. So if every day we enjoy God. Aha kila siku tunasherekea Mungu. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noon time. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down. <laughs> relax in Jesus. Unatulia kwa Kristo Yesu. And believe in Jesus power and his love to now change people. Na wapi kwa nguvu na upendo wa Mungu wa kubadilisha watu. We won't be living under burdens. Hatutaishi chini ya mizigo. 
we will find ourselves being light tutapata mili zetu zikiwa vyepesi and we will find strength na tutapata nguvu because jesus is full of love and gentleness manake yesu amejawa na upendo na upole so remember this picture of jesus kwa hivyo kumbuka hii taswira ya kristo yesu yo i cannot show you a picture of jesus siezi nikaonyesha picha ya yesu but i i represent jesus lakini mimi ninamwakilisha kristo and i represent jesus to say to you na ninamwakilisha Yesu ili niwanenee mambo haya. I'm gentle and humble to serve you. Ya kwamba mimi ni mpole na sina matata ya kuwasaidia. I help you. Ninawapenda. My burden my yoke is easy. Na hata mzigo wangu ni mwepesi. My burden is light. Na hata nira yangu pia ni nyepesi. Relax in me. Ukatulinda ni mwangu. Don't carry unnecessary burdens. Usibebe miziko ambazo hazifai. You don't have to be perfect to have my strength. Sio lazima uwe mtu mkamilifu sasa ndio uwe na nguvu zangu. You just need to say Lord I need you. Ni lazima tu yani nakupasa useme tu bwana nakuhitaji. You know when we come to Jesus is very easy. Unajua tunapokuja kwa Kristo Yesu ni ni nyepesi mno. You just say unasema tu I am weak but thou art strong. Unasema tu mimi ni mdhaifu na wewe Kristo Yesu ni wa nguvu. I need you Jesus. Ninakuhitaji Yesu. Please forgive my sins. Naomba ukanisamehe dhambi zangu. And give us strength. Na unipe nguvu. I need you. Ninakuhitaji. Then you find strength. Na utapata nguvu. What I mean is this saying of Jesus kile ambacho namaanisha kwamba ni huu mtazamo wa Kristo to all people to come to him ili kwamba watu wote waje kwake. His saying is not a heavy burden. Yaani yeye anasema kwamba yeye hana mizigo mizito. It's not difficult. Sio vigumu. Relax. Wewe tulia. Put down all your burdens. Weka chini mizigo zako zote. Do not live under the law. Wewe usiishi chini ya sheria. Do not say I to perform what better. Usiseme kwamba ninanibidi sasa nikafanye mambo vizuri. When we have Jesus will perform better. Ya kwamba kama uko na Yesu basi utafanya mambo vizuri. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope when you hear me you begin to have a more relaxed mind. Nafikiria unapomsikia akiimba unaanza kutuliza mawazo yako. And that verse Psalm 139 verse 5. Na katika Zaburi 139 mstari wa 5 Zaburi 139 mstari wa 5 You have caused me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. This is the Huh? You, you have you're in front of me and behind me and you lay your hand upon me. That's I just same idea. You are in front of me and behind me and you lay your hand upon me. Aha uko mbele yangu na nyuma umeniweka katikati maana yake uko mbele yangu na nyuma yangu na umeweka mikono zako kwangu. You might say is God really in front of me and behind me? Unaweza jiuliza kwamba je kwa kweli Mungu uko mbele yangu na nyuma yangu? Think of a time when we were weak when we sinned. Wewe fikiria kile kipindi ambacho ulikuwa mdhaifu na uko katika dhambi. When we sin did God come to us? Ulipotenda dhambi je Mungu alikuja kwako? He will speak to us when we sin. Na alitunenea wakati tumetenda dhambi and move our heart, right? Na akafanya kazi kwenye nyoyo zetu, sivyo? And this God ministering to us when we sin. Ya kwamba huduma wa Mungu kwetu sisi hata kama tumetenda dhambi. So when we sin he did not forsake us. Ya kwamba tulipokuwa watu na dhambi Mungu hakutuacha. And now we praise God. Na tunapomsifu Mungu. Hallelujah. 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 Praise my Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Peace and joy. So God ministers to us when we are weak, when we sin. Ya kwamba Yesu anatuhudumia hata kama tuko wadhaifu katika dhambi. And when we come to him he'll minister to us more. Na tunapomwendea anatuhudumia zaidi. And give us more strength and more joy. Anatupa nguvu zaidi na furaha zaidi. How many of you experience peace and joy when you pray to him and pray, worship him? Kwa ishara ya kono wangapi wanasikia wamefarijika wako na amani wako na furaha unapomuomba Mungu Praise the Lord Amen You know I love to praise God and love God all day long Mimi napenda kumsifu Mungu na mpenda Mungu kila wakati When I'm you know even when I'm preaching now I'm thinking of Jesus loving Jesus now Hata wakati ninapofundisha hivi ninaanza kufikiria kumhusu Yesu When I'm walking I'm loving God 
Wakati natembea ninampenda Mungu mimi. Jesus you are good. Yes wewe ni mwema. You are wonderful. <laughs> wewe ni waajabu. And I found that whenever I love God there is peace and love. Na ninapata kwamba wakati ambapo ninampenda Mungu nasikia niko na amani na upendo. That means Jesus is ministering to me to us all the time. Inamaanisha kwamba Yesu anatuhudumia kila wakati sisi. Now, I am sad to say that many Africans were taken to America and some other countries to be slaves in the past. I have siku za kule nyuma wa Afrika walishikwa mateka na kupelekwa kule Marekani kama wafungwa. When a master says come, can a master can the slave say I know no I don't want to come now. Je, kama wewe ni mfungwa, yule aliyekufunga mkuu wako anapokuita hebu njoo utasema utamwambia kwamba sitaki kukuja. Do you know the penalty of the slaves if they disobey? Je, unajua huyo mfungwa basi kama hata ti sheria atalipa gharama ipi? They could be punished or killed in a very painful way. Anaweza kuuawa ama apewe the the uh, adhabu kuu ambayo ni ya uchungu mno. And the slave must respond to the master immediately. Na ni lazima yule mfungwa basi akamtii yule mkuu wake kila wakati. Even when he is in the washroom, hata kama yeye ako kule choo ameenda kujisaidia. The master call him na yule mtumwa wake mkubwa anamnika na say wait. Hawezi kumwambia kwamba ngoja nimalize kupupu. He is to finish right away. Ni lazima atakatizia hiyo shughuli hapo na akaanze mbio kwenda. And rush to the master. Na aende aone mkubwa wake anamwitia nini. Let me ask you. Wacha nikuulize. Is Jesus our slave? Je, Yesu ni mtumwa wetu? No way. Hamna. But he serves us like a slave. Lakini yeye anatuhudumia kana kwamba yeye ni mtumwa wetu. And he serves us with a very willing spirit compared to a slave. Na yeye anatuhudumia kwa ule kwa ile roho ya kutaka kutuhudumia unapolinganisha na yule mfungwa. You know whenever I think of God how he serves us, unajua kila wakati ninapofikiria jinsi vile Mungu anatuhudumia, I'm greatly touched. Kwa kweli mimi huwa nasikia nimeguzwa. You know many times when I think of Jesus, wakati mwingi ninapofikiria kumhusu Yesu, I worship him I will have joy nitakuwa na furaha but sometimes i have tears lakini wakati mwingine pia nitadoroba machozi not tears of sadness come again not tears of sadness sio kwamba ni machozi ya ya uchungu but tears that i moved by god lakini machozi ya kusema kwamba kwa kweli mimi nimeguzwa na Mungu ukana not worthy of you oh Mungu kwa kweli mimi sifai mbele zako you have service like that lakini Mungu ametuhudumia sample hii service all the time ametuhudumia kila wakati you are so wonderful wewe ni wa ajabu You serve us even more than a slave to us. Unatuhudumia hata kuliko jinsi vile mfungwa anavyohudumia mkuu. Is you I who is serving you? Inafai so kwa mimi niwe na kuhudumia hivyo. Now have you seen God serves us more than we serve him? Je, umeona kwamba Mungu anatendea kazi kuliko vile sisi tunavyomtendea? Do we serve God from morning to night? Je, sisi tunamhudumia Mungu kuanzia asubuhi hadi usiku? But God serves us from morning to night. Lakini Mungu sisi anatuhudumia kuanzia asubuhi na mpaka usiku wote. And even in heaven, na hata kule mbinguni, God will not say now is time for me to go to take us nap. Aha, hata kule mbinguni Mungu hasemi kwamba sasa ni wakati wangu wa mapumziko nikaenda kupumzike. He continue to give us love and joy and peace. Yeye yeah, anaendelea kutupa upendo, amani na furaha. He is ministering to us forever and ever no stop. Yeye yeah, anatuhudumia kila siku. Hakuna mahali anasema kwamba wacha nili nikapunge hewa. Can you respond to God and say Je, unaweza kumtukia Mungu na useme? God is so wonderful. Mungu wewe ni wa ajabu. There is no one like you. Hakuna yeyote kama wewe. You love us so much. Unatupenda zaidi. If you love me so much, kama unanipenda zaidi, I can relax and say, ninaweza kupumzika na niseme, I'm loved by my heavenly Father. Nimependwa na baba wangu wa mbinguni. I can enjoy God. Ninaweza nikasherekea Mungu. I can enjoy serving God. Ninaweza nikasherekea kumtumikia Mungu. And that way I show the love of God more. Na kwa njia hiyo basi nitaonyesha upendo wa Mungu zaidi. Is there the law of God instead of showing the love of God? Badala ya kuonyesha sheria ya Mungu. Can you see the difference? Unaweza ona utofauti? Now, I also tell people about the, the law of God. 
Eh eh pia mimi huwa naambia watu kuhusu sheria ya Mungu. But when I tell people the law of God, lakini ninapoambia watu kuhusu sheria ya Mungu, I first tell them about the love of God, the perfection of God. Ya kwanza huwa ninawaambia kuhusu ule upendo thabiti wa Mungu. Now here I demonstrate when I talk about the holiness of God. Hapa basi natoa mfano wakati ninapozungumza kuhusu utakatifu wa Mungu. When we go to heaven one day, tutakapopenda kule mbinguni siku moja, Now let me ask you are there Christians on earth who don't quite like you? Are there Christians on earth who don't like you very much? Je, je, kuna wakristo hapa duniani ambao wewe hawakupendi? That they are not very friendly with you. Ya kwamba sio hawana urafiki na wewe. Ndio wakristo lakini hawakupendi. Or they don't enjoy being with you. Ama wakiwa na wewe basi hata hawanaga furaha. But when you go to have and see them, ya kwamba siku ile utakapoenda mbinguni uko waone, do they turn their head away from you and pretend they don't see you? Je, watajificha wajifanye kwamba hawakuoni? Or do they say, "Welcome to heaven." <laughs> Ama watakwambia kwamba karibu mbinguni. And you say, "Well, you you did not like me. Did, did you forget about all that?" Ama utawaambia kwamba wewe unajua haukunipenda. Mbona yani hawi umesahau hayo yote? In heaven there is no more sin. Kule mbinguni hakuna dhambi mara tena. No more wickedness. Hakuna ule ubaya tena. It's only holiness and love. Kule kile ambacho kilichoko kule ni upendo na utakatifu. He has put down all his sins. Kwamba yake chini dhambi zako zote. So he becomes so beautiful. Ili kwamba ukakuwa mtu wa kuvutia. In heaven you see all these people who did not like you and now they all like you. Na hata kule mbinguni utaona wale watu ambao hawakupendi sasa wakiwa wamefanana tu na wewe. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Je, hiyo sio ya muhimu? Yes. Isn't the holiness of God beautiful? Je, utakatifu wa Mungu sio wa dhamana? Now some people say the holiness of God is fearful. Watu wengi wanasema kwamba utakatifu wa Mungu unaogofia. I'm afraid of God. Mimi nimemuogopa Yesu. I cannot do what he wants me to do. Siwezi nikafanya vitu kumhusu. But God is always accepting us. Lakini Yesu anatukubali kila siku. You know when the when the tax collector went to the heaven and say I dare not look at look at heaven. Unajua yule mtosha uzuri alipoenda kule mbinguni akasema kwamba sikuwa nimetamani nimeta, nimetazamia ukuli mbinguni he just beat his chest ye yeah, alijigonga kifua but jesus said this one will it's more uh, you know it's more righteous than the when the pharisee who came, came to the temple uh, na sasa yesu akamwambia huyu mtosha uzuri ni mtu mzuri sana kuliko yule mfarisayo aliyekuwa akienda kanisani kila siku when we have a positive attitude toward god Tukiwa basi na hisia sawasawa na Mungu it's easy to please God. Ni rahisi kumpendeza Mungu. Now some people say it's hard to please God. Watu wengine utasema ai ni vigumu basi kumpendeza Mungu. Standard is very high. Ya kwamba hatua zake ziko juu zaidi. I can reach a standard I cannot please God. Sasa mimi siwezi fikia zile hatua ili kumpendeze Mungu. But let me tell you the Bible tells us it's easy to please God. Mwanza nikwambie Biblia inatuambia kwamba ni rahisi sana sisi kumpendeza Mungu. Even the tax collector who comes to the temple with a lot of sin, hata yule mtosha uzuri anayekuja kanisani na dhambi nyingi. He just said I'm a sinner, please forgive me. Atasema kwamba mimi ni mtu na dhambi naomba unisamehe. Then he is forgiven. Na sasa anasamehewa. And the Bible says When we even when we give a cup of cold water to little ones na bibi nasema kwamba wakati unapompa kikombe cha maji yule mchanga aliyekuwa aliye na kiu we will not lose our reward hatutapoteza thawabu yetu can you do that give a cup of cold water je waweza kufanya hivyo unaweza kumpa mtu akiwa na kiu maji yanyo kweli so jesus is saying yesu anasema it's not hard to please me ya kwamba sio vigumu kunipendezeni you just want to please him ni lazima tu unataka tu kumpendeze. You just want to do the things he wants you to do. Wacha tu ukafanye vitu ambavyo yeye anataka uzifanye. He is very happy. Yeye ana furaha.